Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Moxie Coaching Podcast. My name is Michelle, and I'll be your host as we explore what coaching is and how it can help you create your best life. If you're anything like me, it's important to you to give back in some way. Maybe it's volunteering in the soup kitchen. Maybe it's donating a million dollars to environmental research. It doesn't really matter. I started coaching and podcasting because I'm just one person who can only do so much alone. And I realized that through coaching and through podcasting, I could help and support those of you who want to do good works and exponentially increase the amount of good that I'm able to do. So if this sounds like you, please be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon. Be well. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to another episode of the Moxie Coaching Podcast. No real announcements this week other than my normal thank you so much for being here because I appreciate all of you. This week we're going to be talking about energetic hygiene. And I know we did an episode on it a little while ago, but this one is a little bit different. This one is going to be a fairly short episode that is designed to give you or teach you a tool that I use when I get to the point where I'm just overwhelmed. It's no surprise to any of you that burnout and stress and anxiety are at an all-time high right now. You know, there are all of the obvious things um, that we don't even need to get into, but there's a doctor in uh, Melbourne who has done some studies and he has noticed a huge increase in cynicism. And they're considering cynicism another sign of burnout. So that's something to think about. I hadn't thought about it that way before, but as much as I try, you know, I have become a lot more cynical in the past five years. So something to think about if that is you. All right. So as I said, this is something that I do. I struggle and work to manage anxiety on my own. Um, if anxiety can be genetic, I got it genetically. Um, it comes from both sides of my family. It's, you know, it just, we're all anxious folks. <laughs> so, um, and I've talked about a lot of the stuff that I do to manage my anxiety, right? I talk about the yoga that I do. I talk about the um, meditation. I talk about the gardening, the art, all of those things that I love to do that really help help me manage my anxiety, to keep it at bay, not even manage it so much, just to, to keep it from popping up. Um, however, I had what I think is my first panic attack not too long ago, and it was horrible, and I had to apologize to my daughter who has panic attacks and um, just tell her how sorry I am that that was something that she's been dealing with and not having had one myself, I couldn't understand the depth of the experience. <laughs> and so what I've done, I've come up with a quick, um, easy way of sort of bringing myself back to my body when I get to, you know, to out there. And when we get to that point, if we can bring ourselves back into our bodies, um, it really is very helpful. Clearly, we are better off uh, staving off that level of anxiety before we get there. But the trick 
is, of course, to notice that we're headed in that direction. And I think the busier we are, the more hectic life is, the more difficult it is for us to be in a space where we are sort of observing our beingness in the world. And we're to get to a point where we're observing how we're feeling and working proactively to take that feeling that could be a buildup of anxiety or a buildup of um, challenging energy, notice it before it gets to that critical peak point. And that is something that I think possibly, unfortunately, we learn with practice. Uh, so those of us who have been working with anxiety for years and managing it and all of those things, um, we are better able to, to recognize that we're getting into a place where things are going to get difficult. So we can see the road that we're on and we can clearly see the point where we're headed if we don't do something different. But when we maybe haven't dealt with anxiety before, could be that this is new. A lot of people are experiencing anxiety over the last three or four years who never experienced it before. So you talk about being blindsided, you know, oh my gosh, all of a sudden you, you just feel this anxiety, you have no idea where it's coming from or why you have it. And <laughs> as much as it sucks to have dealt with it my whole life, I'm glad I'm not being blindsided by it now. So, so yes, so the, the trick is to get to the point where you can place yourself in the position of the observer. And you can begin to notice how you're feeling at different times. Meaning you could be having a conversation with someone and you can feel your anxiety rising. Your something in that conversation is feeling icky to you. And when we're aware of those things, we can stop and say, oh, I don't know, something's going on. I don't like the, how this feels. I need to shift. I need to change things. Um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day about something fairly benign. I was trying to explain it and I got teary and I could feel it coming up. I could feel it welling up. And, you know, I was like, Sorry, guys, I don't know where this is coming from, but here it is. So my point being to learn to become self-aware of these feelings of anxiety, of these feelings of stress and overwhelm, of anger and frustration, loss, depression, all of these things, to learn to put yourself in the place of the observer so you can watch yourself and sort of step in like your own little fairy godmother and reel yourself back in before you get to these points where the anxiety is crippling. I will be honest in that I don't know for sure how this exercise will work for people who are not visually oriented. I would be really curious because um, I'm an artist, so everything in my head, I can see it. And I can, you know, imagine things and see them. So if you are someone who can't do that, this may be a little bit more challenging for you. Um, but nevertheless, I think it's a good tool to have. And as you'll see, it's a, it's a flexible tool. So you can, you can create an exercise that works well for you as an individual. But this is mine. 
So as a gardener, I work in the yard. I make sure that my gardens have the plants that I want them to have. And I make sure that my garden has no weeds uh, or, you know, whatever else I don't want in there. I make sure it has water. I make sure it has nutrients. It's something that that I do on a regular basis that I get a lot of joy from, that I get a lot of peace from, a lot of relaxation from. And so that's the, that's my thing that I'm taking into this exercise. The exercise is essentially doing the normal everyday things. And this should be 10 minutes max. I've learned that I can do this in 10 minutes. It can sort of give me a, um, a good place to start my day and it's not prohibitively long. The other thing I like about it is first thing in the morning, for me anyway, meditation is really difficult because I struggle to move past all of the things on my to-do list that day and they sort of just swirl around in my head in the morning. Evenings are much better for me. But I do like to sit and sort of get my stuff <laughs> together in the morning, just for a few minutes. So I set my alarm, my meditation timer for 10 minutes. And of course, I sit and I center myself and I ground myself. And the way I ground myself is to envision with every breath I'm taking, the roots coming from my body are burrowing further into the earth. So every intake, they burrow further and further. So I take a few breaths and allow those roots to get to the point where I want them to be. And then mentally, I wrap them right around either another root or a rack, whatever it is, you know, I don't know, abandoned motorcycle from 1930 that got buried. Doesn't matter, wrap your cords around that. And I think I've mentioned before, you know, see if you can start to feel the tug, the, the, it's almost like a little teeny tiny bit of gravity that you can feel when you're grounded. From there, I envision energy coming up from the earth with every intake of breath coming back up. So breathing in, they're going up, breathing in, they're going up. Oh, all of a sudden they're going up, they're in my feet. Then the energy is up, you know, just continues up with every breath out through my crown chakra. When it goes out of my crown chakra, it cascades over me and creates this lovely, protective, energetic field that I carry with me all day. While that's going on, and that energy is doing its thing and it's flowing and it's cleaning out all of my chakras, I bring in energy from the crown chakra. I bring it in from the top. So I've got energy coming in from the bottom, energy coming in from the top. One is very grounded, earthy energy. The other one is more um, light and airy, ethereal energy. And they're bypassing one another and they're both sort of doing their job to clean out my chakras. And I have all kinds of crazy, you know, ways to envision it. Could be um, a power washer. It could be a fan. It could, you know, doesn't matter. Whatever speaks to you and make it fun, you know, and it can change every time. But the whole purpose is to get your energy cleaned up, get your energy flowing, get your chakras cleared out and get yourself grounded and centered so you can begin the visualization part. And for me, the visualization part is all about a garden. What's in my garden that day? I have a little section of my garden that's family. I have a little section of my garden that's just me. I have a section that's moxie, a section that's uh, my friends, a section that's relatives, you know, however I decide to create my garden. 
and I mentally look at my garden every day and I look at each of these areas and I see what weeds are there. It's like, oh shit. It's what I get. Watch the news, you know, for two hours yesterday and now there's this weed here that is sapping my energy related to politics. I'm going to rip that sucker out by the roots and throw it away. Keep looking around. Uh-oh, there's another one. That's from when so-and-so said this to me and I, or it hurt my feelings. Well, it's time to get over that. So I'm going to pull this root out and let it go. So at the end of this, and this is only a couple minutes, this is not a long process, but at the end of the process, I have mentally my lovely garden. Everything is growing. Everything is happy. Everything is lush and it contains only what I want it to contain. At that point, I sort of envision that I and the garden are one. We are the same thing. To finish up, I say my name three times, either out loud or in my head, my full name, first, middle, and last, three times because it helps me ground myself back into my body because, you know, my visualization, I'm kind of out there mentally, and I want to reestablish that connection with my body. And at that point, I just finish up my meditation, um, you know, whatever else I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, encompass in there. If I want to um, say something to my spirit guides, if I want to uh, focus on, just spend five minutes focusing on putting positive energy out into the world instead of negative energy. Um, you know, just as a, a simple teeny tiny contribution to the betterment of the world. Um, whatever it is that you want to do in, in that 10 minutes. And I find that it's just a really nice way to start the day. I just, I feel like I've gotten rid of all the stuff that I don't need. I feel like I haven't, I haven't ignored it. I looked at it and made a conscious decision that I didn't need it and got rid of it. So what other ways could we use the same process? How about if you are an artist? Let's say that you're an artist and you have a, an inner wall, a big, brick building wall in your mind and that brick building wall is always being tagged by people you don't want tagging it and saying things you don't want and putting things up there that you don't want and so what you do when you're doing your visualization is get out your can of spray paint and spray over the ugly symbolism that's there. Spray over the nasty words that are there. Spray over anything that doesn't look good or feel good to you. And then use your beautiful canvas. Might still have some things from other days on there. You don't have to block everything off. You know, you could, you might still have your family little section up there is still beautiful, and there's no no issues with that. So you don't need to do anything. Um, maybe all you need to do is work on this little tiny section of your wall today that is um, your at work wall, and you had a conflict with someone uh, at the workplace, and you want to address that but you don't want to throw out all of the other beautiful things on your lovely wall. You only want to get rid of the things that someone else put there that you don't want there. 
I take that back. They actually could be things that you put there because sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. So um, but the idea is the same. The idea is to create this inner safe, beautiful space that's all yours where you can learn to feel what it feels like to be in this space and to be in your body and to have control over the the things that are growing in your garden, the things that people are painting on your walls. You could also look at it like a, um, like if you enjoy cooking, someone gives you a big box of ingredients. Every day you get a giant box of ingredients. They bring it in, they plop it on your counter, and you look through and see what your day is going to be like. And inside that box, there almost always are just some really nice things, you know. There's some beautiful pomegranates and there's some lovely asparagus and a nice, fresh, farm-raised chicken, roasting chicken, whatever it is. All of those lovely things that are in your refrigerator or your box, right? But there are some things in that box that you don't want. There are some things, you know, somebody put in your box moldy Brussels sprouts. You don't want that. What does that moldy, what do those moldy Brussels sprouts represent? And get rid of them. Somebody put an ingredient that you don't like in there. No problem. Get rid of it. Take it out of your box. When your box is only containing the things that you want it to contain. When you can look at your box and your heart and your mind work together and say, oh, I like what's in this box. I'm gonna take this box into the rest of my day. Then you know that you have done everything that you need to do. So, you know, these metaphors are endless. And I probably would enjoy, you know, just sitting around and coming up with them, but I'm not going to subject you to that. So you're on your own to start to think about how you identify yourself, how you can create the equivalent of your little garden or your um, cooking box or your art wall and give it a shot lean into it just for like a week and and see just see but you have to give it a real try you have to give it a true try looking at the news looking at pretty much any social media it's really clear that we are in a time of extreme challenges and it's also very clear that we are going to remain in these extreme challenges for quite a long time. And we need to figure out how to be in a world where we're cynical and we're fearful and we're angry. And we have to figure out a way to do that in a way that's healthy for us and in a way that um, doesn't impinge on anybody else, doesn't make things more difficult for anybody else. So that is what I'm hoping this little exercise will do for you. 10 minutes, bring yourself home to yourself before you start your day and see how and if it changes things for you. You all have a great week work on those anxiety busting hygiene tips and find find the thing that you can use to connect your mind and body and have a fabulous week